Hi, I'm Liz Martineau, Board Certified Behavior Analyst and President and Clinical Director of Neshoba Learning Group. Thanks for taking the next few minutes to watch our tips for parents and practitioners. As always, we'd love to hear your suggestions and comments. And now, on with the show. Hi, Liz again. Here's a challenge many families who have verbal children with autism face. Getting the child to sit quietly at church, at a sibling's recital, or at any kind of ceremony. Many children periodically or frequently want to break in and talk about what they're going to do next. For example, my son's favorite was to tell me and everybody else in the church that we were going to Dunkin Donuts afterwards. I despaired of getting him to sit completely silent during the ceremony or during a church service, so I came up with something else, and that is to teach him how to whisper. And my thinking was, if he could whisper, he'd have an outlet for those requests or that excitement or that wanting to talk about what's next, but it wouldn't be disturbing to everybody else. So here's how it works. You first use as many practice sessions as it takes, not at church or at the ceremony, teaching your child how to respond to your whisper in a whisper. So you would say, say whisper. And if the child responds in a whisper, you praise them. Many children will respond by saying whisper. So then you say, no, like this, whisper. Or you could even bring your voice down to help shape it, whisper. And as soon as you get your child able to mimic your tone or even make progress towards it, you praise them and reward them. And I found to conduct these sessions entirely in a whisper is helpful. So keep practicing and pair it with a visual if you can that might say whisper. And you can just handwrite something on a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be fancy. Until your child will whisper when you say that it's time to whisper or when you point to the visual and you can reliably get them to whisper. Then take it live, if you can do it in an empty church or auditorium first. And I found walking in, established before you even get in, that we are going to whisper in this place. So it might be practicing those phrases. Whisper, say, we're going to Dunkin' Donuts. And I get my son to go back and forth with me until he was reliably in a whisper. We walk in, it's got to remember, we whisper here and then we would keep whispering and until the, cer to the ceremony or the service or the time for quiet starts I'd be practicing that with him so that he's remembering I'm whispering and that's what we do. Then when you feel your child is reliable enough to take to the actual ceremony or the actual church service and remember standards vary a wedding or a funeral is a place where you really have to make sure your child's going to be able to do this and sometimes during a weekly church service a few lapses are going to be fine and they won't be too embarrassing for you or, or your child. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the actual ceremony, a couple things to remember. One is your child may forget. So one thing I found that's very helpful is if my son's been quiet for a little while and I'm feeling confident that he may be kind of at the point where he's starting to think about what he's going to do afterwards, I might preemptively whisper to him, remember to whisper, say Dunkin' Donuts, and he might do that. And then he'll remember, oh yes, I'm whispering. Whereas if I let it go too long, he might forget that we're whispering and burst out with his favorite phrases. And then I'm in a position of having to shape him kind of in the middle. So if that does happen and it's, hey mom, you can say, remember to whisper, and try to at least get the rest of it down at a whisper. But periodic reminders work better so that your child keeps remembering that that's what I'm supposed to be doing and that's the rule. And you can point to your visual if you have one periodically to remind and also I have found that for my child writing down the things we're doing next is helpful because he might point at them and look at me and then I both know to prompt him to whisper and also that he's got an outlet for for pointing to the thing that he wants. So I hope that helps. I think that in most cases for kids with autism while the longer term goal is to get them to know when to be silent and to respond to those cues in the environment that can be a very long term process and giving your child the outlet of whispering can tide you over until you get there and that can let you bring your child to a lot of places that you can't if they're not going to be able to whisper or have another outlet. Thanks, I hope that helps.